Hi, and welcome back to Talent Spark TV, where we're here today at Informatics Ventures to hear from Assistant Principal for Data Technology, John Overlander, and his exciting announcement about the new Bayes Centre for Data Science and Technology. My day job when I'm not uh, involved in data science and technology is getting computers to talk like you and me. So that's my research interest. And over the years, it's been a pleasure to work with people across an incredibly broad range of backgrounds. I mean, obviously there's computer science, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, but beyond that, psychology and linguistics and philosophy. So what really gets me out of the bed in the morning is the sheer variety of expertise you get to engage with in the university. The opening of the Bayes Centre, which all being well will be in spring, summer 2018, is a big step forward, I think, for the broader Edinburgh community. And that's a big new building for roughly 600 people, bringing together a whole lot of groups who haven't worked closely together before. A whole floor's worth of space and about 150 seats for corporate R&D teams, commercial R&D teams and we want to see groups of varying sizes. They can be quite small, they can be quite big, but coming into that environment, interacting with some of the smaller companies, interacting with the university, the universities in the area, and from our point of view, what we want to do is be able to anchor them here, but actually encourage interactions right across the community. And I, I've got colleagues who are saying, you know, isn't it amazing, this stuff we've been working on for quite a while, suddenly people are really interested in it. So there's a, there's a, I think there's just that, there's an alignment of interests that the technology is now mature enough and good enough that's coming out of academia that industry can do things with it that it couldn't do before. But it works both ways. So I think industry is fantastic at locating interesting challenges. That on one hand, you can identify the short-term things that you can do, but you can also see how that feeds back into longer-term research. So that's a very virtuous circle for me. And I think that the more we network with each other, the more we bump into each other, both formally and casually, the more we see the benefits. I think uh, EIE has been fantastic and I look forward to many more. I think it's incredibly important, both as a place where people meet and have the conversations and ideas meet money, but it's also, I think, really important because it's a way of celebrating where we've got to. Uh, I think we are almost beginning to take for granted the present we live in, but if you compare the present we live in with the past from say 10 years ago, it is really, really different. So when you look at the whole stack from systems through data up to interaction, the Internet of Things, it's been a long time coming, but I think it's getting there. And in the Bayes Centre, we're very interested in exploring with the future inhabitants, what kinds of sensors they want in the building in order to maximize the comfort they experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think although IoT has taken a long time to get towards maturity. We're nearly there, and I think getting the privacy, security, and trust, the governance around data right is really, really important. And I think that the, what's, what, what we're close to, but it's still very challenging, is genuinely conversational systems, which show some intelligence, show some memory, are able to adapt to the conversational context, if you like. One of the biggest social scourges there is today is loneliness. And on the one hand, I don't think we should be treating machines as substitutes for people. But if machines can help to amplify or do more to help, other, to help human beings address loneliness, then I think that's actually something we should explore. So understanding what those technologies can do, both in if you like, functional contexts, but also in more friendly contexts, these are interesting challenges right now. At the other end of the scale, there's robots and autonomous vehicles, as they say, are just around the corner but we need to think very carefully about the regulations we want it to have in place before we deploy them. I think uh, people like Elon Musk are doing a really good job in raising people's awareness of some of the risks and the need to think through what the social implications are and hence what kind of regulations we want to put in place because technology is not a natural force. It's a set of human inventions. They are entirely within human control. It's up to us to decide what kind of future we want to have and then to help shape it.